Let's talk about making money, as in world building. I wish I could tell you how to get rich. That would be great. But for now, we'll have to make do with creating worlds where we define what being rich means. First, a disclaimer, I am not an economist. I have very little understanding of the science of money. I'm a writer. I have a vivid imagination. I am here to step outside of the boundaries of what would work or not work in our world and talk about what could work in a different magical place like a fantasy world. Economy doesn't have to mean money. That's the first thing I want to stress. Separate money and economy in your mind. When I say economy, I mean what are the ways that resources are shared in a community or country or world. There are many different ways this can be done. In this video, I focus mostly on four of them, or maybe three in a way. It's two versions of shared economy, bartering and capitalism. I will illustrate them with examples just so we all know what we're talking about, and then I will touch on each of them a little bit more in depth just to give you an idea of what might fit your world best. And bear in mind that these are four options, they're not all there is, but maybe my options will spark ideas for your own options. If it does, please share in the comments, I would love to see it. So, scenario. Person A hunts. Person B gathers berries. Person A wants berries. Person B wants meat. How do we solve this equation? One option, they cook a meal together, containing both berries and meat. Option two, Person A and Person B both hand their meat and berries into a communal storage and can then either bring out what they need from there or someone is in charge of dividing things up fairly. Option 3. Person A gives Person B some meat in exchange for some berries. Option 4. Person A gives Person B some money for the berries and Person B gives Person A some money for the meat. But what if Person A hunts, Person B gathers berries and Person C builds houses? Person A wants a house. Person B wants meat, and Person C wants berries. Immediately, we have a more complex situation where you can't just straight up trade with each other, for example. Option 1, Person C builds a house for Person B, while Person B and Person A makes a meal that the three of them share afterwards. Option 2, Person C builds a house for Person B, knowing that they can get berries from that communal storage. In this scenario, Person A gets meat from the storage and leaves the berries there. Option 3, Person A trades some meat for some berries with Person B and then offers those berries to Person C to build them a house. Option 4, Person A gives Person C some money to build them a house, Person C gives Person B some money for the berries, and Person B gives Person A some money for the meat. Yeah. The first two options I gave in these scenarios are shared economies. Everyone does something for the community knowing that they will get something back for it. This generally works in smaller groups where people know each other, trust, and above all, care about each other and feel like they're part of a community. In an upcoming video on economics without currency, I'll get further into how this might work not only for smaller communities, so stay tuned for that. The communal storage that I mentioned might be an option for larger communities where not everyone necessarily trusts or care about each other, but there is someone or some institution that they do trust to divide all the resources fairly. What exactly is considered fair is another issue. And I know this sounds a lot like communism, doesn't it? It is a lot like communism, but bear in mind, just because it failed in China and the Soviet Union and so on, doesn't mean you can't create a world and a society where it can and does work. You're building this world and this society up from nothing. You can give it attributes and traditions that makes absolutely anything work. Then there's bartering, where one thing is traded for another thing. This can be a lot of fun, and to me, I feel like it's far more realistic that this is how common people would trade rather than using money. My understanding of medieval economies is that this was the case. Common people didn't have or use or need money. Money is too abstract. It doesn't have an in intrinsic value. If I have grain and I need a donkey, why wouldn't I just trade that grain for a donkey if someone else has a donkey that they want to trade for grain? Yes, it requires there to actually be someone who wants grain for the donkey, or you trade in more steps. The grain for some tools, which you then trade for a donkey. The point is that all these things, grain, tools, donkey, or these berries, meat, and house in the previous examples, have a value in themselves. Money does not. 
Money is a social construct, and if your society has not constructed money well enough, you're not going to want it. Again, I'll go more into this in an upcoming video. The fourth option that I touched on in my examples, the one with money, is, well, capitalism. We have some form of currency that has an agreed-upon value, and all wares and services are worth a certain amount in that currency. We're all intimately familiar with this type of economy, no matter what we might think of it, but just because it's familiar doesn't mean we can't twist it a little bit. One of the easiest ways to do that is making the currency something other than gold, silver, and copper coins. You can get real creative here. This is actually a super fun subject that deserves its own video, so that's upcoming. In the meantime, here's what YouTube thinks will tide you over. Or you can try this, and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for watching, be safe, I will see you next time.